Okay, so let's jump into it, guys. So first and foremost, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're joining us today in the world. Today's webinar is going to be talking about how to build out a strong business case. Now, just some quick housekeeping items. Today's presenter, the person that you're hearing behind the voice here, my name is Matthew Johnson. I'm a senior solutions engineer here at Checkbox. I have about five years of automation experience across various automation technology platforms. And prior to that, I've spent a lot of time in the M365 ecosystem. So going from things such as Moss, which is SharePoint Server 2007, all the way through to Microsoft 365. I'm based in Melbourne. And if you haven't met me before, there's probably a good reason. I've only just started with the organization as of about four weeks ago. If you did want to hit me up on my socials, you can hit me up on LinkedIn, as you can see, or on Twitter. And I go through and I share all relevant information, things such as today's conversation. So let's jump into it. A few things we want to also cover as well as some housekeeping items. As you can probably tell, all the participants for today's conversation will be muted. However, we do want you guys to go through and interact. So questions can be asked at any time via the Q&A offering. And if you did want to go back and have a look at this information, this recording will be shared with you post-session. So if you do get an email from us, it's obviously going to be all that information around today's conversation. A little bit about us very, very quickly. Checkbox as a platform, we focus on six core elements. We think of the heart of a process and that's going to be form automation. Being able to go through and capture information through an electronic format, whether it's going to be presented to anonymous users via an external access URL or accessing a form via a web UI, or maybe even just a mobile phone. But the takeaway here is we want people to go through and interact with this information and capture all the various pieces that we would normally do in a historically manual process. Once we go through and we complete that, we're going to start kicking off various capabilities within workflow, whether it's going to be some complex rules engines or some tree logic around computational, or it might just be weighted scores, or it might be something very basic, which is just taking the information that we've captured from within that electronic form. And from there, being able to forward it on to the appropriate people who will be associated to that particular process. There are instances where we need to be able to document that information, that information that's been captured from within that form. And so we also have document generation capabilities. The takeaway there being is the fact that we're no longer relying on human workers to go through and compile particular types of letters or a document itself. Perfect example might be a HR letter of offer. It might be an NDA. Information in and to an OHS site walkthrough. The takeaway here is we're removing the human element and putting that information that's being captured from that manual document into a document that has all those various elements. More so the automation platform will link the information in the form to that completed letter, whether it be those various elements that we mentioned beforehand. Another thing that normally pops up with these types of conversations is being able to pull information from systems of record and being able to also leverage that throughout the process. Last and by definitely no means least is the no code development. Everything that we've spoken about, those five other elements, it's all wrapped up within a no code development platform. So when I say development platform, it's simply just a drag and drop capability. Your process automation expert, the person who understands the process intimately, would simply just log into a web UI and start dragging and dropping what that process would potentially look like. So less about that, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the conversation and let's start looking at that business case. And before we go in, we start dissecting how we can obviously go through and build out those strong business cases. Let's go from the very beginning. What effectively is a business case? Put simply, the business case is a formal structured document. Guess what? It could be an informal short document or it could even be a verbal exchange that defines the benefits of an initiative or a project. In addition to that, a business case can forecast the costs, the benefits, and risks of that initiative so that the decision makers, the senior stakeholders, or the project initiators can decide whether the project is worthwhile and more importantly, why to choose one approach over similar strategies. Now, with that in mind, we then want to start looking at what should I consider? Because I now want to know what a business case is, what should I consider before I even start that process? And from things that we've seen in the past, Projects will fail without having a solid business case to rest on. As well as that, if a business case is not anchored to the reality or 
the needs of the larger business objectives of the organization, then it's going to be irrelevant and it won't go through. So we want to make sure that we're making sure that it's relevant and it's really aligned to the business objectives of the organization. The way that we'll go through and do that is through research. And being able to create a strong business case is focusing on the why, the what, the how, and the who. This element and those elements that we mentioned must be clearly communicated. The business case will need to address the why, but obviously in greater detail. So think of the business case as a document that is created to incrementally avoid spending unnecessary time, resources, and effort. And in order to get the board to approve of this project or business case, it is necessary to build out the business case that demonstrates why the project is needed and what are the benefits of that project once that project is finalized. Another thing to also consider, the reasons and the benefits of a project, it may seem perfectly obvious to you and to your colleagues who are intimately involved in that process. However, Let's take it back a step and think about those stakeholders. Think about those other decision makers who might not have that intimate knowledge of your, what the information that you guys currently have rattling around your head. And the takeaway here is it's not so obvious. So the stakeholder might be dealing with a myriad of different business unit objectives and tasks that need to be done. So think of the business case as a well-defined document that will help that project effectively that business case, stand out amongst the other competing priorities that they have within the organization and will be the key for you getting approval for those finances of that project. So the rule of threes. And what we're talking about here is the three steps that we believe is the key to success in building out a strong use case. First things first, stakeholder engagement has to be done from the very get-go. And once we go through and we start understanding the stakeholders and we start engaging them, we want to be able to start doing that research that we mentioned just beforehand, being able to get the problems, the challenges, and being able to build out the appropriate insights. Once we can have all that information available, we then want to start creating a compelling use case and business case to get that across the line. So let's now dissect those three elements that we mentioned before. We want to be able to start looking at the stakeholders and put simply, there are clients, vendors, upper management or departmental leaders, they might even be contributors within the project, but we need to meet with those people, we need to meet with those stakeholders because let's face it, they're invested in the project and you must go through and understand their expectations. And as we imagine, it's so important to go through engaging with those stakeholders from the very beginning. A few things to take into consideration. Engaging, engaging with your key stakeholder is a process that, as I said before, needs to start from the very beginning and it has to be handled through to the end of that business case. Stakeholders need to be persuaded to invest in that automation requirement. Your business case is that key element that they're going to leverage within that persuasion. So we want to be able to make sure that we understand this key stakeholder or the stakeholder that you're speaking to's priorities. And as you can imagine, different stakeholders have different priorities depending on their strategic agendas. These priorities will determine how you present the business case to each of those stakeholders. And we can have an example here. We could have four different types of stakeholders. We could have an IT department stakeholder, a leadership department stakeholder, some internal comms stakeholders and marketing and sales stakeholders. If we think about IT, IT are going to be concerned about the technical objectives they want to achieve and become closer to the business process. So we need to make sure that we're tailoring it to that narrative there. The leadership departments, they're gonna be concerned about the employee engagement and company objectives. So once again, very different to IT. Or the internal comms stakeholder, they're gonna be concerned about things such as making communication within the organization easier, employee engagement and a cost saving. So marketing, put simply, they're gonna be concerned about customer service, collaboration, and being able to get that information at a very quick rate. Now, as you can see here, based on those four different types of stakeholders, they all have very different priorities. So we wanna make sure that we're going through and tailoring that information specifically for them. So we can adjust that message regarding how that automation initiative will be relevant to those individual stakeholders. 
We can also use that approach to start thinking about personalized targeting and working out that core message for each stakeholder. That targeting will then go through and focus on stakeholder management and will result in multiple engaged stakeholders to help that business become, oh, sorry, that business case become a working process. Whilst we're going through and thinking about that personalized targeting and being able to get them on board, we want to make sure that the information that we're collecting, we're reporting back to them through things such as status reports and being able to provide a regular and timely status report that they are appropriate for giving that information back to the stakeholder. And that's quite crucial. Now, when we think about the information that we're going to present to them via that status report, there are going to be teams that we can go into the finer details with, effectively the weeds. But for executives, they just want that overview. So we need to make sure that we're also tailoring those status reports to the appropriate audience, audiences. It's also to them, we are following up with them regularly. We're asking them questions to see if they have any feedback. We want to make sure that we're managing them and we're also communicating with them proactively. And we want to make sure that we know that there is any discontent or some decisions that have been made that will impact the overall project. So making sure that we're right on the trigger and right, right with the heart blood of understanding that the stakeholder, what they want to be able to achieve, and if they have any reserves or negative thoughts associated to that. We also want to make sure that as we're going through and providing all these things that we set and managing, uh, we set and manage those expectations, being able to clearly identify which stages each key stakeholder wants to be involved in. We also want to make sure that the timelines by which their feedback is needed is provided to them well in advance so they can go through and give that feedback as they so need to. We also want to include a schedule of office hours to them. Sounds really silly, but we want to make sure that they can easily reach out to us so they can give that feedback either in a private setting or it might be in a wider stakeholder group. But as always, we need to be realistic, transparent and honest with them throughout every project phase. The stakeholders can tell and they will thank you for that. Lastly, I don't really need to go into the last dot point here, but communication, communication, communication. We engage them early, we communicate with them frequently, we make sure we handle those objections and we make sure that we provide them with the appropriate feedback. Being able to engage that key stakeholder or stakeholders is going to be the key to success within this business case. From there, we want to also be able to understand the problems. And as we said before, in the past, we've seen projects fail without having that solid business case to rest on and not having it anchored to reality or the larger, larger business objectives of the organization. So we want to make sure that we're looking at developing that business case and making sure that the first stage of that business case for that automation project is heavily based on practical research and the collection of relevant data. The reason why we want to do that is that it will allow you to understand the needs of your organization and how your employees can benefit from that implemented automation solution. Some things to consider when we start thinking about that first stage is researching and gathering data that will be useful understanding your employee or stakeholder needs, or it might just be the business user need. Once we've gone through and we've done that, we can also then start identifying the benefits of automation within the organization. We want to make sure that we're researching the new, automation, the new automation project. Sometimes this process can take up to three months. So it's important for us to go through and plan accordingly so that everyone working on that project has an understanding of the time frame. They are doing something to work towards that. And the reason why we want to do that is because sometimes people can get stuck on the planning and the research phase. And it's actually a bit of a distraction. So we wanna make sure that we go through and we set up the appropriate constraints from the get-go. We put it as a capped effort at three months. We need you to do X, Y, and Z. Once we get those appropriate pieces of information, it's obviously going to help. Help us in the next stage, which is gonna be that ideation process. And put simply, ideation is a process of brainstorming all the major pain points that can be in an automation and specifically within an automated business. The aim of this process is to make sure that we input that information and has been collected from the various stakeholders. And through a thorough list of high level pain points that have been created, we can then go through and start ideating that information. Typically the people proposing these ideation sessions are going to be your knowledge managers. 
those who will have intimate knowledge of the process. And they could be things and people such as your BDs, your process engineers, effectively those who will be responsible for improving the internal efficiencies or using innovation to improve the service for clients and those business users. The process is often initiated by those key people and involves engaging specific practice areas and departments. The one thing that we want to start thinking about as well is being able to get validation before we start going into that. And the goal of getting that validation here is to make sure that we're getting approval from those end users and that the proposed automation solution and business case will actually solve their problems and pain points. It also is imperative because it will allow for us to get approval from upper management that the time spent on this project is actually justified. So getting validation is one of the most important steps in this development process. We also want to ensure that that use case is actually worth automating before we spend that time on that. You probably ask, how can we go through and do that? And a quick way to do that is simply just an ROI calculator. Being able to go through and do that ROI calculator will then be able to give us those insights. And we can then go through and start comparing the time spent on building the solution with the time saved after automating the business process. This will then give you and your team and more importantly, the appropriate stakeholders, a good indication of whether the project will deliver more value than the resources dedicated to it. And we'll actually cover that a little bit later on in this slide. A few other things that we wanna focus on is the determining of areas of value. Once we have a few things running through the data, it will be easy to identify areas where automation initiatives are going to benefit the organization. These areas should resonate with decision makers. They should probably emphasize areas that you know will be of importance to particular stakeholders. And a great example of that would be improving the business user experience, but also removing the process ambiguity. This will encourage the managers to get on board. And in some instances, we've seen organizations that already have an appetite for automation, but the issue that we've seen with them is that they have tiny little bubbles of automation needs across the various business units and business departments. Ideally, what we want to be able to do here is help assist in articulating that value of the business and the business case. We should understand those processes as a collective, more so not a use case. This will then give us the capability to then go through and start understanding common themes. A great example that I have there is we were speaking to a big four bank a couple of years back. We knew that they had automation requirements. However, they had a very narrow use case and it was specifically taking information from a system of record after an event, a, a new list or a new object or something along those lines. And then we wanted to be able to engage the workflow engine to do a few things. Obviously update the system of record, notify the appropriate people about the redlining process, generate a document, do some task notification and bring that back. Now, the issue that we had with that was this was one particular pocket within the business, and they believed that they were the only part of the business that had a requirement for automation. Now, through the appropriate discovery, running conversations with other stakeholders, taking it a step back from just the actual use case and starting to think about themes, not necessarily going through and updating the appropriate system of record and sending information back and forth between information workers, it was more so waiting for an update from a particular system, task notification, document generation. And as you can see now, automation as a broader topic of conversation becomes rather sticky as opposed to a very pigeonholed capability. From that, the one thing that we then wanna start looking at and a point that we mentioned before was, we wanna start looking at the qualitative and quantitative benefits associated to that. We all know that predicting accurate IT costs can be tricky and the associated costs are often forgotten. The total cost of ownership, as defined by Gardner, is the total cost of using and maintaining an IT investment over time, can be quite hard to go through and estimate. However, we wanna start looking at qualitative and quantitative benefits that will help us along the business case journey. Now, if we think of the, the qualitative versus the quantitative type of conversation, qualitative is gonna be that soft ROI, and it's gonna be used to describe the benefits of technology which sometimes a bit hard to go through and quantify, but they still obviously have a big strong impact with the organization and should be weighed into a technology decision regardless. It often encompasses things such as productivity and efficiency, customer satisfaction, or it might just be how the organization feels about using technology. Some of the questions that I've seen in the past that work really well and being able to do some quality of ROI um, is just looking at basic questions. 
will automation help the running of the business? And if it does, how so? Will automation investment boost the employee morale? Will the automation capabilities organize the organization more effectively? Will it enhance the customer or client experience? Or the big one that comes up all the time, will it save my staff hours? Hours around waiting for information to come back, doing admin overhead. Will automation assist in that? And if we can go through and we can start answering yes to a majority of those mentioned questions, then guess what? We're probably finding that that quality of ROI is going to be on the high side. Now, aside from the quality, we want to start looking at the quantity. And there's a bit of a, a basic formula that we actually go through and look at. And on the inverse, as we said before, with the quality, it's more so hard to go through and put a formula around it. Quantitative can be actually formulated. And the first thing that comes to mind is that ROI count. And to calculate that estimated ROI, we need to compare the time saved with the solution to the cost of the actual software. And for general purposes in this animation here, we're only focusing on quantifying the time saved with this formula, which is hours spent with the current process minus the hours spent with the solution times the number of times the solution will be used. And that will give you that hours saved per year. Now, if we wanted to actually move beyond that and look at some other ways to get some more quantifiable formulas, we can then start looking at improving it by doing some further calculations. And you go, well, Matthew, what do you mean by that? How can we put some additional calculations based on the thing that we're seeing here? And this could be done by multiplying this formula with the average hourly rate of people involved to receive the monetary savings within that solution. And that final figure can then be compared with the software cost of that automated solution. So as you can see here, a lot of things to also go through and extrapolate through the problems and building those insights. And the last piece, Please take into consideration that this is only about a 20, 25 minute webinar. So we have gone through and we haven't given you absolutely everything, but we wanna be able to obviously go through and create that compelling use case. And that documented use case needs to provide confidence. And it also needs to provide a level of certainty that is considered to be that proposal and make it successful. Now, obviously that process of developing that business case is important. It has to be well executed and it has to make sure that it's enabling us to go through and develop a solid business case that increases the benefits, the values, and more importantly, reduces the risks. This also then leads to a greater likelihood of securing that support to proceed with the investment. And here are some key steps that we've seen in the past that will help in creating that business case. We wanna make sure that we're confirming the opportunity and problem. And the way that we'll do that is through describing the situation calling out the current issues and problems, along with what are the business opportunities within that proposal. This also will include some background to the pro proposal, the actual project itself, and start looking at investment logic and high level business requirements. We wanna analyze and develop this shortlisted option. So being able to identify alternative approaches. Sometimes I've seen organizations go between two to four vendors to start that analyzation process. We wanna be able to gather information about those alternatives and analyze the options and develop those shortlisted options. Once we've then gone through and we've done that, we wanna evaluate the proposed solutions and more importantly, how will the organization use it? We wanna evaluate the solution that will deliver those business objectives and then select the preferred option. We wanna take into consideration that in some instances, we need to look at the strategic and final value, sorry, financial values created with the risks. From that data that was gathered in that previous step that we mentioned, we can also then understand how the organization will use it within the various business departments. We wanna have that implementation strategy and that's simply just around the preferred option and detaining all that information on how to achieve those key business objectives. More importantly, who will be accountable for each of those milestones and how will we mitigate the project risk? Because that is a big thing to also take into consideration. And lastly, that recommendation. That recommendation is going to be that overall business case and confirming that recommended option. We want to be able to present that business case recommendation to the board with the management team's approval to make sure that we can go through and proceed. Now, obviously, you need to go through and pro provide all these pieces of information to create that solid business case. But as we mentioned before, given that it's only a 30 minute webinar, these are some of the keys to success. Now, to recap, and I know we're getting close to the, the half hour block here, as we mentioned before, and you probably picked up through the conversation, early stakeholder engagement is imperative. It is the keys to success. So we wanna make sure that we're engaging early, we're communicating throughout, 
and we're making sure we're getting that iterative feedback throughout the entire process. We also want to be able to get a true understanding of the organization, specifically around their challenges and their problems. We want to make it relevant. We want to make sure that we're going through and it's going to be aligned to the organization and more importantly, trying to resolve problems that they currently already see. Once we also have gone through and created that data and that insight, we want to be able to create a simple and in sometimes it's very effective uh, business case document that will go through and present the thorough kind of ROI that's associated with automation platform and more importantly, what they can expect from automating those use cases. So I hope that that has been handy in terms of that information. I'm going to stop it there for a second, guys, because I know that we're getting close to 1 p.m. Australian Eastern and see if there is any questions that have been raised. So I'm just going to go through and stop for a second, see if we have any questions that are open. I might give that a second whilst we're going through and waiting for some questions to pop through. We want to now start looking at potentially where do we want to go to next? So we do have some information that is available on the company website. So if this is something that has resonated with you and you want to check out some other web webinars in that series, please hit up the website, go to the resources tab and within webinars. Otherwise, we have some examples that we could go through and provide to you, which will be beneficial in this business case process. Otherwise, if you actually did miss the last webinar, we do have that available and that's focusing on validating the ideation of use cases. And you can find it, as we said before, in the website under the resources. We also have some other handy blogs and templates there. Once again, thank you for joining me today. Our next session, which will be held on Wednesday, the 26th of May with Min, which is going to be focusing on how to assemble the right team for your automation project. So if that is going to be something else that resonates with you, you're going to see it on the socials. Once again, before you guys have my information, I'll be putting it up. It'll be on the company LinkedIn as well. So if you did want to go through and register for that, we can definitely go through and do that too. So guys, I will leave it there. If you did have any other questions, please let me know. If not, we'll start wrapping it up. Once again, guys, thank you for your time and for the anonymous attendee who went through and asked for those templates and the business cases. I'll go through and that answer that now. So once again, guys, thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon. Okay, bye for now.